Hello guys and welcome to the last episode of season 1 of my podcast More Than. In this week's episode, I caught up with Norway and Sampdoria midfielder Morten Thorsby, who like myself, is extremely passionate about sustainability and the environment. It was really refreshing to talk to someone that you have so much in common with and we could have spoke for hours. He recently met Italy's environmental minister after being vocal on the changes everyone can make for a greener future. And to top it all off, he also let slip that he's a gunner, so that was awesome to hear as well. I hope you like it, I certainly did, and make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe. I hope you guys have enjoyed season one, and I'll be back with season two in a few months. Stay tuned. Well, hello everyone to a new episode of More Than, and today, as a guest, we have the man Morton Thornsby. How are you, my friend? I'm very good, thanks you. Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. I have to say, I'm very jealous of where you are, man. It looks really cozy over there. <laughs> yeah, it's my my favorite uh, getaway in the vacations there in the in the mountains in Norway. I'm. Uh, I guess I'm a bit different where everybody normally seeks the sun in the vacation. I go north yeah. and I go to the mountains. And um, actually, we had really good weather. We had 20 degrees and sun, which is not very good for this. For yeah, this for sure. Uh, today, it's rainy and 12 degrees and uh, cozy inside. And we have a, yeah, we can, we can get the fireplace and, and it's, very, it's very nice. But uh, yeah, it's in the middle, it's the middle of Norway. It's a small place called Lom. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a famous place. It's close to the biggest, uh, one of the biggest national parks in the highest mountain okay. in Norway. So uh, it's a really beautiful place, and it's my uh, grandparents. So they have a old farm, four hundred year old farm, which is there located in the middle of nowhere in the in the mountains. And uh, yeah, I stay here now with them. They've been staying here for a period now with the with the here in uh, also in Norway now. So I think they they are more safe here. They are old and they're in the in the danger zone of getting the virus so they stay here now they i think they moved up here actually so they stay here really? right around. so it was nice to meet them here now yeah. it looks like a nice place they live right now in these times <laughs> yeah it's i i, I mean it's a perfect place to stay in, uh, in the <laughs> pandemic or in a war or whatever it is it's uh it's, it's a very nice place to stay and it's also a beautiful place so i really find peace when i come here and uh, it's yeah. a nice place to get uh, get your energy for a new season that's good, man. I'm very happy that you're having that such a good time, man. Um, tell yeah. me um, a question that I make to everyone in the podcast. Um, I really hate talking about it because, uh, yeah. you know, it feels like every single conversation starts with the pandemic. But um, I think uh, a lot of people have been getting a lot of positive things through, through slowing down and spending time with our loved ones and stuff like that. So tell yeah. me, how, how, was, how was this time for you? How did you cope with it? And also, uh, was there any new things that you learned during this time or you know there's a lot of people that started playing the piano for example or you know yeah. was there anything for you how, how, how was that that period of your life and um, um, no I mean I was I was one of the we, we actually I, I had a virus and uh, I got it in the beginning of uh, beginning of March we were nine players in our team some who, who got the virus so I was pretty much four and a half weeks all alone like I didn't see one one person for this wow. for weeks. I was locked down in my house and uh, I was in Italy in my house so uh, I mean yeah that's that's kind of a it's a huge change from living a normal life playing thinking about the next game and then and suddenly just changing your life in a, in a, in a, I mean everybody felt the same things it's how how fast you're able to change your mindset and and cope with the new situation and uh and I mean that was pretty. It was a. It was a moment of. Uh, I learned a lot about how, how. I mean how. How fast I'm able to <laughs> to actually change my mind around when something happens. And I mean mm -hmm. at least a thing like this that we didn't expect. Nobody expected it. I. I didn't. I didn't expect it. But nobody did. So I mean yeah. it was a thing, unexpected thing that came around. And I mean that that's pretty amazing. Where you know with the, we are humans and we are extremely capable of uh, changing our mind around when things happen i think that's very core dna from how we're we are as a species also that we're able to cope with new situations and that's that's a good thing because these things will keep on happening in life i guess that's yeah. 
that's uh, all new situations, new things, unexpected things. Um, yeah, you, you, so I mean, that's, it's been a very learning uh, moment and, uh, and I didn't have, a, I had the time to read. And that's, that's nice. I had, uh, yeah. I could learn Italian because I was also in the case of learning <laughs> Italian. So now I speak Italian very well. That was a, that was a good thing coming out yeah. of it. And, uh, and I had the time to read and do some other nice projects uh, on the side, which, uh, which I really have uh, time to. So I, I managed to, to keep myself busy and I think I came out, uh, yeah, came out pretty well. That's good. I'm happy. I'm happy that your that your Italian is getting better. <laughs> and also, because in Italy, yeah. in Italy, the quarantine was quite harsh, right? Like, for example, in the UK, it was all very relaxed. Uh, yeah. I don't think personally was the best choice because clearly, uh, you know, we never kind of like reached the peak. But um, yeah, over there it was quite harsh. Like you had the military in the street. No one could really get out. It was just like literally stay at home and you can't do nothing. Yeah, yeah, it was by far with Spain. I guess it were, Italy was the first country to really lock down, yeah. and we and lock down hard. I mean, yeah. we couldn't re, we couldn't go out. Like if I went out, I would get like just outside my door, I would get a huge fine. And police yeah. were they were everywhere. So I mean, yeah, yeah. it was just to stay at home. And and I mean, I had the virus as well, yeah, so I just yeah. I had no choice. So I just had to stay at home. And I mean, all the things going on, it was crazy to follow on the news because i was just inside in my house and crazy you, you, right? just, you just you were just following everything in the news and yeah, it's, it's crazy but yeah. at the same time it was you just realized that this is which it's it's kind of easier at least for me when you just saw like this situation is the same for everyone i mean yeah, you had yeah. everyone was in the same situation and i mean that that makes it a bit bit more easy to accept yeah 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 for sure anyway yeah let's stop talking about this yeah, let's stop negative this. stuff <laughs> And um, <laughs> I always say a lot of people that love football listen to this podcast. So I'm very sure yeah. that a lot of people know about who you are. But for the people that don't, I want you to yeah. tell us who you are. Where did you start playing football? Where did your love for the game come from? Did you play any other sport? Yeah. Like, how was your life as a, you know, as a child and as a teenager? Yeah, I grew up in, in Norway, in Oslo, the, the capital, and I was actually doing a lot of different sports. I wasn't really into only football. I was very into the ball at early early stage, but I was doing a lot of different sports. In Norway, we have a kind of a yeah, system where you start off doing not only one sport, but a lot of different sports, which I think is very healthy and mm -hmm. in a way because you get to learn many different things. You get the various different movements in your in your youth which was for me also great i did cross-country skiing alpine skiing wow. skating tennis uh football and then you kind of choose your way with uh, with what what you want to do and i felt of course early that i had a talent for football and that was kind of in the and like when i was 14 i was still doing cross-country skiing that was the, well, the last sport i i stopped because i yeah at, at a certain point there's no more space for two more plays you have to choose your sport yeah, yeah, uh, yeah but i was kind of still i was not really like of course i wanted to be a professional footballer but that was not like my only way i i went to school i did all these games to keep my options open and then when i was 17 i got my first professional contract for for Stabæk, which is a team just outside oslo and um, and uh, would buy just one late one year later I was sold to Head and Pain in in uh, Holland in Netherlands uh, when I was 18 and I played there for five years uh, and uh, last uh, summer I went to um, Sampdoria in uh, Italy and I, now I played uh, yeah, my first season there which just stopped. Nice and you've played so, for the Norwegian national team as well, right? Yeah, I have one cap for the national team. I. Have have like I don't know how many games <laughs> for the under twenty yeah, ones. That's, I think, that's I think, I think actually we, we played I, you. Yeah, once we played. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we played in Spain. Uh, I think you. Yeah, I remember. I played left. Twenty sixteen. One up against you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you, you guys uh, had a very so good team. You guys had a very. We good had team. a great team. We had, uh, of course, Martin Odegaard, which everybody knows, and uh, and uh, Holland now is was coming up. He was not in that team, but he still came up and. Uh, now he's doing great, and we have we actually now have a very very exciting new uh, generation coming. Yeah, that's so cool. That's so cool. So, and yeah. um, how are you now at Sampdoria? Are you happy over there? How's Italy? Yeah, um, yeah, Italy is great. I mean, it was it was great to be in Holland. It's a great uh, it's a great place to learn football. I mean, when I think about really to learn the principles of 
like attacking football. I think Spain yeah. and Holland is really like the two places you want to be. Yeah, I had a Spanish yeah. coach when I was in Norway, which was great. And I came to Holland. I was also capable of learning, you know, just core football about football and like education. Yeah. Uh, and you learn about football, you learn about the attacking football style and how to play play with the ball. And I mean, that was so exciting and great, great for me. And I'm very happy I did that. And now it was, I mean, but at a certain point, you want to test something new. And I mean, Italy is something completely different. Yeah, but yeah. still, you saw that a lot of players from the Dutch league did well in, yeah. in Italy. So, so uh, and now after the first year, first year in Italy is difficult. And there's a lot of players who says this because it's a really different league in any way. Mm. The football yeah. is different. The mindset different. It's it's really something you have to adapt to. So I'm happy that I had a pretty rough start, but then I got into it, and uh, and uh, from October I played a lot of yeah a lot of games, and I did uh, better and better, and I felt really that uh, the things are coming. So I'm really excited for next season. So uh, yeah, I'm really really excited for just uh, being in a new league, with a new my mindset, and you know that's that's yeah. the. That's really the perks about being able to play outside. You can learn also about culture, which is uh, the, the country culture, but it's also the football culture, which is, which is different everywhere. And I mean, that's that's a really great thing that being able to play outside and, yeah. and uh, in different countries. Yeah, because I think and, Italy has also one of like the biggest football cultures ever, right? Like I don't know. Yeah. I feel like the way people live football in that country is also second to none, and it's like a religion. Yeah. Like people support clubs and like they die for them, and sometimes. When you come from other countries and you see that, it can be like kind of like a big impact, right? Yeah, yeah, it's great. And especially when you're in the region, I mean, here in Norway, the football is a big sport, but it's not like Italy where it's like, it's everything. Like yeah. football is really everything. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that's that's great, great to be a part of. And mm-hmm. you feel it, you really feel it. Like with people on the street, you feel it, feel how much emotions there there is is around football and I love that I mean that's why you play you want to feel those emotions you want to be a part of something like that that's mm-hmm. that's why you love this game that's why we all love this game because it's about emotions it's about everything that's that's the great thing about football yeah for sure and uh, going back a little bit about what you said about your bringing and like how you had other sports and education yeah. and stuff. you're someone that um, did you go to university yeah I did uh, I finished school because I went to Holland before mm. I finished like high school, so I had to finish the last year, yeah, last years there. Yeah. And I started, uh, I started law school actually in 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 Norway also from from the Netherlands. So I did one year law okay. school there, and now I started uh, doing. Uh, yeah, now I changed because now this year I did mostly Italian. So yeah. I mean, doing stuff on the side is is important for me, for kind of just to relax the head kind of sometimes yeah, because yeah, yeah. when it's a lot of football all the time sometimes it's just nice to do something else to just yeah. don't think about it and you yeah. know to relax the head kind of in something totally different yeah. and and at the same time i i find it very interesting to learn about uh, other stuff so uh now maybe i will keep doing this or i will go in another direction i didn't yeah. decide it yet but uh, i mean these things are uh, I, I like to have something on the side always to keep my yeah. mind busy but yeah yeah, yeah. To no, I, keep I my mind open I fully agree. Why I'm asking you this is because I feel like that I read in one of your interviews that, um, you know, people know you a lot because of the stuff that you've done for the environment. Um, I feel like um, your education and like learning about politics and stuff is, those are one of the things that inspired you the most to actually, you know, be able to make changes and, and, you know, for example, in football, I think you put a plan together to make sure that the football club was, more green yeah. than it was. and do you yeah. feel like your education had a big impact in like for you to you know have the knowledge and be able to put yourself forward to do these things yeah i mean i think the uh, educational part is fundamental to for me like i've been lucky you know i grew up in one of the best like if you're if you write the educational systems in the world and always great and i had all the possibilities i could do what i want and i I, that's something I'm really appreciating because I see how much value that has given me and especially mm-hmm. in terms of what you are saying like also having having other perspectives I mean I also grew up close to, I grew up here being in the mountains in the uh, in the nature and then, you know that's as just as you told Groom I just uh, heard you and and Matteo speaking in the other podcast when you were speaking about growing up in the ocean I mean this is also a kind of educational part that you yeah. by in your childhood grow up in an environment or learn about these things that gives you some kind of interest passion 
an engagement in these in these issues and i mean that's why i got my engagement my passion for the environmental and, and climate crisis of course is because i'm i feel like in my childhood and in my educational i in the education i learned about how important these these things are and i mean if you don't have this kind of education it's really difficult to engage yourself yeah. so that's why i say like one of the most important things i think football can do sports can do because sports and football is really a fundamental also like you have I, for me you have two kind of educational systems you have the school system and you have this like the sport community and the, both both these things are incredibly important in educating people mm -hmm. and i think that's why also it has a huge responsibility and especially football that scatters so many people to also use that use that possibility or use that to uh, to educate people and also yeah. not only about football but about other issues and yeah, yeah, yeah. and i think that's educational part is really fundamental for uh for the future that we're able to to use sports which we love which which is great which is positive and also to engage people in other things which yeah. is maybe not so easy to 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 see uh um, if you if you're not like grew up like in a certain 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 way yeah 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 and then um i don't want to like in football i always say that footballers sometimes we live in like a bubble right um yeah. we're like uh our industry and the way we're brought up in like you know when you're part of like the barcelona academy or the chelsea academy like and they yeah. give you so much money really early and all this stuff it feels like it's like a different society and it kind yeah. of you don't really grow up you don't really grow up and uh in the same world that other people live in and i feel like when i found myself in in, in dressing rooms um you know it feels like you're in a different planet and people don't really see the causes on the or the stuff that's going on outside because we are hardly affected by it because our life is mainly yeah. too good. You know, we're safe. We have money. We have people that look after us. People love us, etc. But it's not yeah. really the real world, you know. And I feel like for me, when yeah. I um, started talking about social issues, and I'm not speaking yeah. bad about footballers. I'm not saying they're no. bad people or anything. It's just like your environment doesn't help, you know. But no. when I feel when I was um, talking about political issues or the environment and stuff i really felt that i was like the only one you know that yeah. that really cared about yeah. these things uh, me, too, and I wanna, me too yeah me too. that's why i wanted to ask you like do you feel like it was it was did you feel like you were a bit alone in this situation yeah i felt yeah i've been like try like talking about this issue in the last five years like mm -hmm. kind of but I felt exactly the same as you felt that this was something that was not kind of an issue that was not a thing we talked about in the dressing yeah. room. It was not part of our, in the discussion anywhere I found in the football world. Yeah. And I've been really missing the discussion because football is such a huge part of our society. And why shouldn't the football taking their part of the responsibility? Because we all have to change. All parts of the society has to change if we're going to sure. solve these problems. So, I mean, that that's that's been that's such a strange thing for me and i know what you say is really something i agree to that the football world is something many consider as very like closed different i mean something with another rule kind of rule system which is not <laughs> really like the same as the rest of the world which is yeah. kind of true but it's not some i think that that part is also changing and i heard like that it was also from the talk you had with Mathieu, which i really agree to what he said that like the athletes we are also changing now you see all the athletes also the different sports are changing and 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 acting much more as also and taking more responsibility their, their role their their role in the public and their and their role as also role models so i mean this is the things we have to uh, see that the world is moving on being a footballer is maybe not enough also in 15 20 years, mm -hmm. years you have to show that you're also care about social issues because that's that's something we are a part of the society and without the work well working society we can't play football and you see that's clearly now in the situation we've been in the covid crisis like football is only beautiful and uh, and and wonderful in a working society when when things are working well and when so i mean football is something with positive emotion that's something we all want to be like really passionate really we 
want to feel these positive emotions, but that's only possible if we interact with the society yeah, and, the fans and, and that's that, and the fans and everyone. So, I mean, that's, I think people start to see this and I think it's changing slowly. Yeah. And I think that's also why, you know, this podcast is a great example of how things are changing. Athletes are changing. We see, we have a responsibility also. So, I mean, these things are really, I think it's going the right way and I'm really positive about the, the, these things will start to change and that we will, yeah we will be we will see a positive change in this direction yeah i hope so too and you've just said um that you feel like this is a responsibility for us right now um why why do you think that there's still not many like you say obviously it's, it's changing and every time you yeah. see more people but why do you think that people are scared or are not doing it do you feel it is because they haven't found their passion yet and they don't want to talk about something just for the sake of it? Or do you think that people still feel like a little bit scared of like saying something that, you know, people can come back to them, oh, why did you say that mm. or something? Or wh why do you think there still needs to be a push for people to actually mm. take this, response, this social responsibility you're talking about? I, I think it's both what you said. I think there's, you know, a lot of people who's like trying to find their way. And I think that's great, you know, thinking a lot about different things. They're thinking about all the problems we have, like what you spoke about, if it's the case of racism, if it's the case of female rights, if it's based on uh, climate and, and environmental issues. I mean, there are many different problems and you, we all have different, uh, different things we think is important. But what you say is, I think it's true. It's, it's also difficult what we have because we, especially like we have, like of course speaking the case of environmental and climate problems, it's, it's difficult because you know that we have a lifestyle which is not really, it's not a sustainable lifestyle at mm -hmm. this point. Yeah. And that's why it's really difficult to talk about it. And you have, to, you, have to under, you, you have to speak in a way that people understand that you're not perfect. You are, you're trying to change, like we, but you are not perfect. I mean, you can always tell me, yeah, but you, yeah, I saw like you, you drive a car or you, yesterday you flew to your, you yeah. know, I mean, all these things that get back to you is really difficult because this, this is how, how kind of things have been because the discussion has been really about you and me and we have to change every, in every individual. But that's why I think it's important to change this by, by saying that this is not about an individual it's not, it's not the competition by being the best individual. It's about changing yeah. as a group, as a, as, a, as a human species, as the world community. We have to change together. I mean, that's, that's the things we have to... I think you have to understand as an athlete, you have a, you have a great platform. And I think uh, Greta Thunberg uh, like, was one of my idols or one of my yeah. role models, at least. Yeah. She put it great. That, like, the bigger your platform, the bigger your responsibility and the bigger your uh, carbon footprint, the bigger your moral duty. Yeah. And I think that's really so true. true. Like we all have a different part or a bit, it's a different um, role to play in this puzzle. And we as athletes, we, we actually have an uh, audience, we have a voice. And I think, I think it's just like Matteo put it, I think it's just super important to, yeah. to use it. And, uh, and, and, you know, sometimes it goes wrong. Sometimes you say something wrong. Sometimes there's, yeah. but you know, this all, I think it's going in the direction of getting more, yeah more more uh, more people out in discussion and that helps the uh, uh, debate to involve in the right direction so uh, um, yeah. i think yeah like you and i'm really i'm really <laughs> it's cool to finally see that it's moving it's really moving yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's very positive to see for sure and um one thing is that you say which i always try to stress a lot is that the, the fact that we're not perfect you know and uh, yeah sometimes a lot of people tell me when i when i i don't know Imagine a tweet something about the environment. Yeah. And they say like, oh, but you fly in an airplane to games in a private jet or like you do this mm -hmm. and you do that. And that, what I always say to people is like, you know, we have the resources that we have nowadays, you know, and as mm -hmm. you say, we live in a certain lifestyle that cannot be sustainable. But these are, this is how history and how life has evolved. And now we have these things that we have to deal with them. Yeah. And in order to, for us to have this platform and to be able to raise awareness and, you know, probably having the power to make the changes that we do, we have to work. And for yeah. our work to be able to function, we have to travel. So sometimes you have to balance yeah. a little bit and be like, yeah, listen, I'm not perfect, but I know that every single choice that I'm making is the best I can, but I mm. just have what I have right now. 
And I think it's very important for people to understand because nowadays I feel that there's a lot of like cancel culture, you know? Yeah. Like everyone is so good. Like someone can be doing everything so good and then they do one bad thing and then this person is canceled. And I think that's yeah, very yeah. wrong, you know, because even um, nowadays with like what we're talking about, about uh, the civil rights movement and like racism, a lot of people are going to make a lot of mistakes because, you know, we educated through the years and yeah. we're educated wrongly. And yeah. sometimes you need to make mistakes in order to realize and then be better, you know? And it's not yeah. about canceling people. It's actually about like telling people when they're doing something wrong and say, look, you should change this or you should change that or you should do this instead of that. And then that's how we move forward. Not by saying people, oh, you've done this yeah. and we don't want to talk to you, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I think it's very important to send this message yeah. that, you know, no one in here is perfect, but, you know, we have so many choices that we can make. And the most important thing is like, to make sure that we're doing as best as we can to be able to be in a better place in the future, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that sounds very, yeah, I I really agree, and uh, that's that's I think it's a good part like what you said about the we not being perfect. That's something I think we as athletes feel a lot. We who we, like we feel a lot this this issue, and we feel it inside yeah. us because we know we are not perfect. We know we are doing something, but at, at the same time, we see that we want to. We want to change and for example there are solutions there are technical problems like for for, for example flying flying yeah. in we don't have that much time we have to reach a like a way game we can't use for example a train or like uh, another solution so i mean but there are so many other things we can do that actually can solve the problem i mean flying sends for two percent of the emissions worldwide i mean we can do a lot of things to to uh, uh, <laughs> a lot of things where we have actually technology available where yeah. which we can do and I mean, that's why the role of football is, of course, over time to change to become sustainable. Mm -hmm. That's that every industry, everyone in society has to change and to become uh, sustainable over time. But the biggest role of football is to spread awareness and what you're talking about, the old things we actually can do, what we have to change in a change of a mindset. Because, of course, what you said, we live in a society based on something that won't work forever. And we're all thought that this will work, but it won't work because yeah. if we keep on going in this direction, uh, we'll ha we will have serious issues. Yeah. And and I heard you, and I mean that's that's uh, <laughs> that's kind of the the moral change, or not not the moral change, but that's the uh, the change we have to go to, to as people. And then in the meantime, it will be discussion. But I don't think we should be afraid to take that battle because it will be it will be a. Uh, uh, changing over time in the right direction, even though we make some mistakes. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one of the things that I like a lot about how you do things is, uh, me, for example, I, I use my platform a lot to like raise awareness and stuff. And yeah. um, but I, I feel that you do as well, but you also do a lot of work that people yeah. don't see. And sometimes yeah. it's the other way around, you know. Sometimes there's a lot of yeah. people saying like, I do this, I do that, I do this, I do that, but then you know. You have to put your money where, where your mouth is, you know. That's you know I mean? that's a very good expression. And I and, 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 and I think and I think you do that a lot. And um, when we first when I first reached you to um, to see if you wanted to be in the podcast, you told me like, oh, I have a meeting with the environmental minister of Italy, and I was like, yeah, wow, like this is next level. Like the stuff <laughs> that you've had been going through, like you're actually going out the way and spoken to the yeah. actual environmental minister because you want to make changes in the sport. To me, I was like, yo, big yeah. respect because this is, this is something different. So I want you, I want you to tell us, like, um, you know, where, where, did, where did this come from? Like, what did spike the idea in your mind? And then obviously, I know you've met with him already. I don't know if you can say much, but um, yeah. Yeah, tell me about this experience. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the core idea was actually starting, like, a couple of years ago. I was already, like, kind of, uh, like, I was a bit, uh, because I saw that there was no real initiative from the football industry when it came to like solving the climate and environmental problems or at least trying to see how the football can contribute becoming sustainable becoming yeah try to in these kind of issues of course we had a lot of great initiatives like a common goal and then a lot of different actions but in kind of the environmental and climate discussion I felt that the football was not really contributing mm -hmm. and then in the current quarantine I had a, I had a, had some time to do some to work, and I was working with a project where I wanted to see if I could gather the football industry within, 
to yeah to see if we, we can, how what we can do to become sustainable. And uh, I worked with my father. We we worked uh, close on these issues, and I worked with a uh, yeah with a company called or not a not a um, organization a non profit organization in Switzerland called Sustainability in Sports. When we tried to like see what kind of things we could do, and that's where I actually had to I had had a Zoom call also with uh, Mathieu to speak mm -hmm. with him a bit about what he did and how, how he saw the issue about football and sustainability. And I had to, and I kind of developed an idea and a project I wanted to, um, to, to, to uh, uh, yeah, to work on and to uh, publish this autumn. And, um, and then we got this chance with the Minister of Italy, which was kind of a, yeah, it happened through my agency because I had the day I was, picking up some plastic near my near my home in, in Italy. It was mm -hmm. kind of a, a strange thing. And then there was uh, some some public, there was some fuss about it mm -hmm. and then it reached him. And then suddenly we had a meeting with the Minister of, the Minister of uh, Environment in, uh, in Rome. Mm -hmm. uh, so the last day after the last game, I went to Rome with the train and uh, we met him and we got the uh, possibility to present the project for him. And uh, and he was really positive. I mean, the meeting was really open. He wanted to meet us, see what we had to say, and uh, it turned out really well. So we, I will meet him again in September to concretize, concretize things. But uh, in the main, in uh, in uh, in like in few words, like we we have a project where we want to like I have a, I actually created a, a foundation, a nonprofit foundation called We Play Green. Mm -hmm. uh, which is a which is a non-profit organization who wants to focus on on uh, engaging the football community in in taking on uh, the environmental and climate uh, problems and becoming sustainable. That's like the core value, and we want to work with uh, education, engagement, and concrete action within football to see what we can do to really become a uh, sustainable sport. Or we also I also want to work in other sports, but I think it's the best yeah, yeah. places to start in football. And now we have this great place. And the, the minister in Italy was really positive because of course he see also that the 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 platform that the, the football gives with in communication is huge. You know, you reach out to so many people and, and it's 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 a really big possibility. So um so we have a really really good project going on. I'm now working in a very hard working phase here like like with working on the establishing everything and getting on foot with uh, we play win and I think I hope within two three weeks we have an ongoing uh, we're up and running and uh, we will from this year we will start and running and uh, going for ambassadors of players and working with the industry with sponsors with clubs with players and 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 fans to engage everyone to taking on this problem because I mean for me it's I'm there are so many big we have a lot of problems and I think it's important that everyone find their way and I mean what you said and in other podcasts, you have to pick your battles, and I think that's true. And I pick this battle, and I'm going to yeah. do everything I can to, 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 to do what I can to, to, yeah, to solve it and to use my, my rope. That's amazing, man. Well, good yeah. stuff like with everything. I'm sure it's going to go really, really well, man. And I feel, um, you know, always I feel like Scandinavia, especially, for example, like young people, they always seem like they really care about the environment and they, they seem really smart and really connected to nature and stuff. And when you come here more down south in Spain, Italy and stuff, yeah. I feel like kids just play football, right? And I feel like yeah. in, countries, in countries like Italy and maybe Spain, the fact that football can have this uh, sort of educational also platform to like learn about the, the, the stuff that's happening, you know? Because I see... Yeah. Um, in the UK, a lot of people, uh, young people that really know what's happening and marching and stuff. But personally in Spain, I don't see that happening, you know, because governments yeah. are not helping because, I don't know, maybe there's another interest in other things. But actually, yeah. you know, the youth are the people that are going to carry us, right? Yeah. So I think it's so important that um, in countries where like maybe because of the, the educational system, maybe it's not teaching so much about it or because there's not so much awareness or information about the causes, the fact that you yeah. can use such a massive platform like football to be able to send this message across, I think yeah. is amazing, man. So I really hope it's going to affect a lot of lives and, and obviously um, help the future because, you know, you have to start from the ground up. And like if young people are the ones that really love football and engage yeah. in the platform and really get to know what's happening, that is what definitely going to help us in the future. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, I think that's the main, that's also the main cause we want to, that's also one of the visions of, of the organization or also for me is to make football possible for, or like the, the possibility to play in the future for future generations. Of course, yeah. Means that the future generation also has the ability to play like we do. Like that's uh, all we have. We want fresh air, we want clean water. We want all these simple things that's, that's, that makes it possible for us to do what we do today. I mean, uh, and that's kind of like, I think the, the climate problem or the climate case is always, like the communication is always so, f it's been too far away, you know, we're just speaking about polar bears in the Antarctic, uh, Arctic, and you know, all these things that we don't see clear, but it's actually really close. It's just about having fresh air and fresh water and fresh ground yeah. and having the possibility to do the things we want to do i mean it's really this is the basic things that we're fighting for and it's not something about you know of course polar bears are, are nice and important but you know that's not what, what the case is about this is a case for yeah. your own children my children i want to fight for my children to be able to play football yeah. i want my grandchildren to be able to play football i want my you know that's what i fight for i mean that's something very core uh, and very uh, you know close and important for us and I think if we can spread this message that we're actually just fighting for our children to have the same possibilities as we have then I think the message is more easy to, to spread because uh, I mean that's also what, what, what we all want to do you know save our family that we can we can do what we want and live, uh, live happy lives I mean that's the core, core thing about it yeah for sure man those are beautiful beautiful words man um, tell me on a more personal level um of course i've always said before um we're not perfect but uh just so you can give some inspiration as well for the people listening what are some of like your lifestyle choices that you've made through the years in order to you know be more conscious about the way you live and uh, yeah you know and and produce less waste what are some of the things you do I mean, there there are several things you can do as a as a person. I see. Mm -hmm. I always say that the most important you, thing you can do as a person is to vote. That's yeah. the most important thing you can do to vote. Yeah. Use your use your ability to vote if you have. If not, then if you're under eighteen and you don't yeah have vote, use your vote, use your possibility to to change your mind of your parents for example to get them to vote for the future for you know that's what i always say and if you yeah, can yeah. vote vote for sure because that's the one thing we can do to change the political system because that's actually that's what we need to solve these problems we need a political shift so i mean that's the most important thing you do if you can do only one thing do this thing okay. and then it starts all these other things you can do and that's of course changing your own behavior because changing your own behavior not only changes yourself but it changes all the people around you i mean for example i think one of the things you you're speaking about with Mathieu and many others, of course, changing your diet or changing the way we eat. Mm -hmm. and this is, of course, a huge contributor to, to climate change and also environmental problems is the food system, which is incredibly important. So, of course, as environmentalist, you have to be very concerned about this. And I cut out, really cut down meat consumption in the last two years. I'm now, I'm not a fully uh, vegan, but I'm eating maybe 80 to 90% less meat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and i'm also trying you know sometimes it's not possible sometimes i'm course, in a way yeah. again we don't in italy it's it's also a food culture which is really strong so it's not always you have your right options but you know being aware of it make that you can change a lot and just of not course. eating meat for breakfast and lunch is for example something that changed me it changed me a lot so um so that's something i did just changing changing the way i eat and then of course it's in the way um when it comes to recycling i'm always aware i'm trying to be very aware of what i buy and if i buy something if i really need it and 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 if i uh and the way i i throw it away of course is very important to be aware how you how you recycle it but that's also depending on where you live i mean I, I don't know how it is in england but in italy it's a big problem because yeah, the recycling yeah. is not always the best i don't know how is it in england is it good no, in, in, in england is all right in england is all right the only thing is like I always do recycle everything I can and there's yeah. a pretty good system. Um, there's always been concerns about like, okay, you put this in this bucket, this in that bucket, but then you don't really yeah. know what's happening with it. You know, yeah. I don't feel like in Spain, for example, they're not really transparent with it um, no. because people said that they've seen like a, like a truck that, you know, they, they grab yeah. They grab the different bins and then they put them all in the same in the same basket kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, I think 
uh, but that's what I mean, right? Like we're making and that's that's political. Uh, that's yeah, that's, that's political. That's, that, that, that's what I mean. We we're, we're doing what we can with the resources that we have, and then yeah. you know it's not really our choice whether the you know whether they put it in the same bin or not. That is I mean that's, that that's it comes why. from up there, right? Yeah, yeah. that's that's true. So uh, that's why we need to we need to get and then write the vote for the right politicians who's willing to change these systems because yeah, or else yeah, we yeah, can't yeah. do anything i mean that's 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 how it works so uh yeah. yeah and the last thing i of course flying is of course my biggest personal committer to my carbon footprint that's flying because that's yeah. the huge part where which is much, much bigger than everything else unfortunately and at this at this point we don't have any technology available to change that for journeys where you have don't have that much time of course i chosen the last two years when i have more time in my vacation i've always ch chosen other alternatives like trains which i love when yeah. i have the possibility to take the train. i love trains it's great it's a great way of transport but it's just it's uh, so good yeah yeah to to just you have been able to think and and it's uh, nice and quiet and yeah i love trains but, uh, but sometimes it's not possible mm -hmm. and then you know then, then you you have to fly but uh, I've, I've cut down a lot on flying also and and uh, and that's uh, yeah, and that's that's kind of the things that I do in my life. I drive an electric car. You know, you can always speak about it. That's that's yeah. sustainable now. But I think it's moving in the right right direction. Sure. I think that's sure. the direction we have to move in. And and I mean, uh, otherwise, I try to to bike and walk. And uh, yeah. I love to bike. Also, in Italy, it's a bit harder than Holland. Holland's oh, really? great. <laughs> you can bike everywhere. Yeah, uh, in Italy, Italy people it's drive a bit crazy, it's right? Not, it's not. Yeah, 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 and it's a bit dangerous because there's no real bike culture there. So yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. so uh, that's a bit more difficult now. But uh, that's that's also something, of course, <laughs> using uh, bikes or or feet is a, is a great way to cut your carbon footprint. Yeah. But uh, yeah, all these small things is uh, you. I have to do as usual, and it's not really costing me a lot. I think I, I, it's nothing I changed over the last two years that hasn't like. I, I have been very positive, you know, every way I've changed you know, food wise. I've yeah, explored great new dishes and great new food, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's wonderful. I mean, you, you also, you're also vegan? Or yeah, you are, I've, I've been vegan for, for three years now. And um, definitely, yeah. it's very different now from when I started, you know, from when I started, I was like, yeah, what am I going to do? Just going to eat salad and pasta and bread. And right now, it's like, like you say, there's so m there's a range of dishes that, you know, different cuisines from all around the world that they're like vegan or accidentally vegan that are delicious. Yeah. And I have, um, you know, very similar to you, when I, when I was 16, I never had a salad in my life. I was just yeah. meat and pizza and all this stuff, right? And then I went yeah. vegan and my mom was like, are you crazy? Like, you don't even like this food. Like, you don't even like vegetables. Yeah. What you want to do? I was like, mom, don't worry. I want to try it out, see what happens. And then yeah. when I was injured with my ACL, I was with my parents for three months. And during those yeah. three months, we ate vegan and both my parents loved it. And my mom right now is like, basically like you, like she only really eats food when she goes out outside to a restaurant maybe, or like at home, barely, barely any meat. And she feels so much better as well. And yeah, um, yeah I always say to people like, I'm, I'm, I'm not that person that I'm going to say like, oh, you need to go vegan. You need to do this. You need to do that. I always feel like people need to find their own feet, right? You have to, I always try to give yeah. people come to my house, for example, in London, I say, listen, in this house, we don't cook meat. So if you want to come and yeah. stay here, just know that there's no meat in here. And then after two, three yeah. days, they actually feel like, you know what? I didn't really need to eat meat. Like with this food here, I was really, really yeah. happy. And sometimes people, you know, when they make this switch is actually, it's not as bad as, as people think. It's just like our cultures and like, you know, in the past, we didn't really have the options that we have today. Um, no. So, yeah, man, it's, it, it's something that yeah, is it's, it's starting to work for everyone. Yeah, and it's absolutely true. And I think that's that the strategy of just inviting people in and just showing them yeah, how, it's, great, it's good. how great vegan food can be. It's the best thing yeah, because after, sure. like, wow, this tastes great. And also the best effect is, like, after you can just go straight out running. Just after you can take a yeah, run. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you, don't yeah. even, you don't even have to go to the couch 20 minutes. <laughs> because you're over full you, just you feel, feel light really all the time you feel light and you feel good i mean this is personal i mean food is a very very difficult thing because it's so personal as you say it's a lot yeah. of cultures a lot of yeah, personal yeah. things you know it's very difficult to talk with any i would never never like something about like it change like i i just 
trying to inspire people to change in the in a way or just showing them that other po- things is possible and i mm. believe and i think i see the now how how people uh, react on, on the changing is actually that oh maybe also i can start to change and maybe it just yeah. starts with one meal a day maybe it just starts with not eating meat before dinner you know yeah. all these small things a meat free day you know, the, you know that we cannot change everything like that's not possible we have to change in a, in a way that's like in a slow way yeah, yeah and where it suits uh, everyone yeah and we yeah, just yeah. have to work on uh, yeah yeah and uh one of the one of the things that actually um during quarantine one of the habits that i changed uh was the dishwasher which i didn't know it was so bad because you know all the yeah. little capsules they release yeah. microplastics into the ocean and i didn't know uh, that and since i was in quarantine i was using the dishwasher and then i stopped I'm washing everything by hand. And I was by yeah. myself. I was literally spending hours and hours every day washing dishes. But um, it was also my, like my little part of the day where I was like, it was kind of like those kind of tasks that like once you get involved in it, you know, it's just easy and you focus yeah. and time flies. And also the way yeah. I wash my clothes as well has changed a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Before I used to change, like wash my clothes a lot. And then some of them, they used to get ruined and stuff. Now I'm really picky when I need to wash yeah. my clothes. I don't use the dryer anymore. You know, I always hang them. And if there's nice weather, I hang them yeah. outside because that yeah. obviously improves the life of your clothes, etc. So there's actually like, yeah. yeah, I think one day I need to make like a list or something of like all the things that we can yeah. do. But you keep you know, learning. Like you keep learning. I have friends now that they've started washing their clothes by hand. Yeah. Because it actually saves a lot of water and stuff like this. And I was thinking, yeah. if, that, if I start washing my dishes by hand, washing my clothes by hand, I'm not even going to have time to go to training, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's how it is. So, I mean, these, these are the kind of things which I believe is also a political issue that we have yeah. to solve on a higher plane because, you know, I believe it's, this is great. I mean, all individual things you can do, it's great and you should do it and you should uh, try to change yourself. But yeah. in the end, we have to change in such big numer because we have to remember we are a lot of people on this globe and we have to act in yeah. the same like in the same direction. But you know, you know that, that's, that's why also sometimes these problems can seem so big and so that's also why it's something sometimes turns into something negative because you feel, of course, you have no impact in the big picture. But that's, you know that's not true. We are we all have an impact, but we have to move in in the group together. And I mean, yeah. fo- focusing on the group will always lead us in the right direction. But that requires that every individual, you know. So it's like the it's diff- difficult because it's about the individuals and it's about all of us. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we yeah. have to we have to see that. But that comes with awareness. And I believe all these things is something. What you say, it's something which gives we have to fo- focus on the positive emotions that gives the positive energy and I, I think this these things actually can doesn't have to be a bad thing to change and i think to see that is difficult but when you mm-hmm. do it it's less difficult so yeah. and if we can help with these kind of changes and and get people to try out some different things uh, for example eating different or different ways of changing your flows or the micro chain getting out the microplastic of your yeah, dishwasher yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean then then it's only, great only good yeah. yeah for sure and then just before we go um do you have any books uh any documentaries any recommendations something that has inspired you maybe not just like in the like in in quarantine because a lot of people have read a lot in quarantine and stuff but like yeah is there a book for example that inspired you in order to like take action or like something to recommend to our listeners yeah, I mean, for the, um, I mean, I had the, um, when I was, uh, when I first got inspired when I was seven years ago, that was really when I had the moment of inspiration for like really acting like environmentalist, like mm-hmm. being, yeah, and I was uh, this organization called 350.com, that's, or, uh, .org, which is uh, this organization that worked with Greta Thunberg, and they made a movie called Do the Math, and it lays on their their internet pages. It's a really great mm-hmm. movie to see about how carbon works in the atmosphere and how it affects us. The informational movie, which I recommend everybody to watch if they have forty minutes extra. It's mm-hmm. already seven years old, but it gives a great a great picture of how, how how things work around us, and it's very inspirational. That's where I got my inspiration from. Mm-hmm. And of course, the of course, the, if you want other like informational things, the before the flood of. Uh, 
the, the the documentary before the flood of Leonardo DiCaprio is also, I think. Yeah, that one was very good. Like in terms of information, yeah, in yeah. terms of information and 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 engagement and these things, it's it's very inspiring and um, and uh, you can always discuss, but uh, but I think in the main main, it's, it's a very good it's a very good documentary. And lately, I've been actually um, reading a good good book for that's a new book that came out now of. Uh, Jonathan Safran Four. I don't know if I say his name right, but it's about it's where he called it "We Are the Weather," and it's uh, he says that saving the planet begins at breakfast, and it's about how the food system, we, yeah, how the food system works, and how we can how we can change by stopping eating meat before dinner. That's one of the ways that we can mm -hmm. actually a simple way we can start to yeah, yeah, reduce yeah. our meat consumption, which is a nice book and is also really inspirational. And he writes. Um, He's a great writer, so it was uh, that, that book I read in the quarantine, and it was yeah. uh, it was great. Uh, it was great. Nice man. So man, I'm sad to say goodbye because it is so nice to see someone talk so passionate about the things they care about. So um, I just want to say yeah. thank you for everything you're doing because um, you know it takes someone like you to actually start the conversation and go and yeah. start a project. And I have big big respect for you, man. Well done. And it's been a pleasure having you here. Uh, Great to be in. Take care of yourself. And I really hope next year you have a good season and uh, wish you all the best, my man. Thanks a lot. And uh, the same for you. And uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm happy to see that we're we're more us and it was also great to hear the conversation with you and Mathieu because Mathieu was also one of my I'm actually I'm I'm from my childhood I was an Arsenal fan so I'm oh, really I'm still like yeah you know and, <laughs> come and on. Uh, so now I have a great uh, come on Gunners so I have uh, yeah it's and it's fun to see but it was great examples also you and Mathieu are bringing these things in Dubai I think it's really, really great to see that we are more and that gives also me uh, more inspiration and I, I hope uh, for you also so of course, uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's and good. anything that's and good. anything and anything I can help with your projects or anything, mate. Yeah, honestly, I'm very happy well, to do. I'm sure Matthew will be as I well. I will let you know when uh, <laughs> when uh, when our uh, when our replay green uh, project is out. I hope within some weeks I will I will let you know, and uh, I hope it will be a really cool thing. For sure, I'm sure it will be. All the best. Thanks. See you more soon. Bye bye. Ciao <laughs> ciao. To keep up to date on future episodes, subscribe on YouTube, Spotify and Apple Podcasts at Hector Bellerin.